Sega would drop Virtual Fighter for the Saturn during the Japanese launch of the machine in November of 1994. This port of the Model 1 arcade machine from a year earlier was poised to take Japan by storm. It was incredibly popular across the country and had become a competitive phenomenon. Despite having only three buttons, the gameplay was varied and loaded with tons of moves. Each character also had vastly different fighting styles that mimicked real-life martial arts, contrasting greatly the unrealistic projectiles and special moves popularized by Street Fighter and its many clones. The Saturn port faced a hell of a task, as the Model 1 arcade hardware was a monster polygon pushing titan at the time, and the Saturn's complicated architecture meant AM2 had their hands full. The port would not be arcade perfect, with noticeable hits in polygon counts and frame rate. These concessions had been expected, but the polygon glitches had not. These glitches tended to manifest mainly during the replays, and consisted of polygons dropping in and out of frame. The Japanese version of the game suffers these glitches the worst of any version, with most of these problems lessened considerably in Western releases of the game. Despite the less than perfect port, Japan absolutely fell in love with the Saturn version of the game, leading the Saturn to an early lead over the PS1. Japanese publications had lauded the home port as a triumph in both gameplay and presentation. Virtua Fighter would go on to sell nearly one-to-one -one with the system in Japan in those early months, quickly establishing the Saturn as the system to own. This love and admiration would not translate to the West at all. The Saturn port had virtually no competition at the Japanese launch, but by the time the game made it out in other territories, the various gaming media outlets all had access to Battle Arena Toshinden for the PlayStation 1, which launched in Japan in early 1995. While Virtua Fighter was generally accepted as the better playing game, Battle Arena Toshinden destroyed it visually in just about every single way. Virtua Fighter lacked the game's flashy special moves, transparency and light sourcing effects, and its 3D backgrounds. It was a classic case of style versus substance, and Virtua Fighter would be instantly marginalized to most next-gen customers. Virtua Fighter remains one of my personal favorite fighting games of all time. Often criticized for its sterile look and feel, I adored its technical gameplay and varied fighting styles. It's one of the best playing 3D fighter games of that era in my opinion, and infinitely more accessible than Battle Arena Toshinden is today. The soundtrack also contains a number of incredible entries, easily deserving a place in your MP3 collection. <laughs> Games like Virtua Fighter 2 and Dead or Alive would go on to introduce vastly superior texture mapped polygons and 60 frames per second to this style of fighter, rendering this flat shaded presentation a relic by today's standards. I still love the look and feel of this classic however, its shortcomings are vastly outweighed by its fantastic design and playability. If I had to rate this one today, I'd still give it a solid 8 out of 10.